Hi, I'm Kelly Johnston with the University of Calgary, talking to Paul Koobs with our Cummings School of Medicine about the human microbiome. Paul, why is this research so important? So if you think about all the bacteria in your intestine, billions and billions of bacteria, they all work together as a community of cells, and we call that the microbiome. It's not just the intestine, it's the lungs, it's the skin, it's all of your bodies covered in bacteria. We're starting to learn that it can affect many of the chronic diseases that we've all been puzzled about. Why do we get all these chronic diseases, and why has it happened in the last couple of generations so prevalently? And we think the microbiome is contributing because of the way we're starting to live. We're cleaner, we're taking more antibiotics, we're doing many things that we didn't do in the past. So are things like antibacterial soaps and antibiotics um, harmful to our microbiome? This is what we're investigating. People now think that giving you antibiotics can harm your microbiome. Giving you probiotics might help your microbiome. Now it's not unusual for somebody who's on a high dose of antibiotics afterwards to be given probiotics to replenish their healthy microbiome. Paul, can cleanliness make us sick? We're trying to figure out whether too much cleanliness is actually detrimental to us. Uh, we've evolved to live in dirt, to live with our bacteria, and altering that can be detrimental, we think. Tell us what diseases may be related to the microbiome. Chronic inflammatory diseases like asthma, inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes, there's very good evidence that the microbiome is affecting those diseases. But bacteria produce various products that might get into the bloodstream and change the way your brain fires. So now, you have a brain that's not functioning properly and you might have things like autism, uh, Parkinson's and various other diseases that are related to the brain. Things we don't normally think about in connection with the microbiome. Obesity. If you transfer the microbiome from a thin person to a heavy person, they may lose weight. So the microbiome is actually affecting our weight, our health and many other things. So where is the future of research to the microbiome going? Well, I can imagine a time when many of these diseases will be treated with a healthy microbiome. And we're already doing that for some diseases. C. difficile is the classic example. Populates your gut, causes you tremendous disease, and we now take a healthy microbiome, transplant it, and those patients get better. Thanks, Paul. Check out our website to learn more about our research into human and animal health.